So peace and blessing to all. Happy to have you here. We're expecting a few more folks, about 40 people signed up. I'm expecting about 25 or so. We're about halfway there. Uh, happy to have you here on this second installment of Election Protection. Uh, the, the meditation sangha that you didn't know that you needed until you came. Um, and what I mean by that is, y'all, the you don't need me to tell you that things are a little off right now. Right, that's like the most captain obvious statement in the history of the English language. But what you perhaps do need me to tell you is that perhaps to some extent they've always been off. But you know, from my organizing heritage, it only takes a small group of committed people to change the world. You know, or, or quoting uh, Mushi Mikeda, like um, she and I were part of this thing called Mind Our Democracy. Uh, last year, when we did um, the uh, lead up to the 2022 election, she offered this dime that was just like in the realm of the spiritual, all things are possible, right? So why will we bore ourselves with the platitudes of a cynical generation when we can dream and imagine things beyond our wildest, you know, like, so the purpose of this Sangha is to root ourselves in that wisdom, to root ourselves in possibility and community, because those are the only things that have ever fixed our problems anyway, right? Cynicism and individualism haven't solved a goddamn thing, pardon my candor, right? So, and it only takes a little bit of folks, right? So before we get into um, the norms and the lineage and all the things that I care to share, um, I have a relationship with Kripalu and um, the CEO Robert and I are good friends. and. When I was telling him about this thing that I'm doing here, that we're doing here, he reminded me that there used to be a group of people in Europe that would pray during World War II. So interfaith communities that would pray during the heaviest bombing and craziness on continental Europe in World War II. So they held faith that this thing would end when it seemed impossible to do so, right? So what we're considering here is you know we have the lead and you know this isn't terribly partisan for once in my life but it's just it's a statement of fact there's a guy that has over 90 federal charges that has polling over 40 percent um in the republican party and there are many of us that are just like how is this even possible like you know 90 cases this is crazy and there's a substantial portion of the country that believes that there's another substantial portion of the country that thinks everything is lost but it only takes a minority of people to think that everything is pop that you know think of the people who believed in abolition of slavery when that was wasn't a possibility or it didn't seem like it was in the cards think of the people who believed in the right of women to vote when suffrage was not even a thing, you know what I mean? That's what we're doing here. We are drafting off of a very, a very powerful legacy of social change rooted in organizing, heart space and clarity of mind, right? So for those of you who don't really know who I am, welcome. <laughs> Reggie Hubbard, he, him, his are my pronouns, dialing in from the DC metro area. Um, I hold several lineages. Uh, one is black liberation. Uh, so I'm a descendant of um, enslaved humans. Um, from Virginia um, that told me all of their stories. And so I delight in proving things wrong, especially as it becomes to master culture, right? So if master culture says it isn't possible, um, I think about it, pray about it, meditate on it, and do the exact opposite. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing here today. I also hold lineage in um, the Thai forest tradition of um, Vipassana. So Ajahn Shah is taught to by uh, John, Jack Kornfield and Tara Brock and others. And uh, Musham, I'm going to put you on the uh, spot yet again, because at the uh, there's a quote that you had at the bottom of your email that says, um, if there's a flood, don't let it flood your mind. If there's a fire, don't let it burn your heart. That's also what we're cultivating here, right? Because there are floods everywhere, right? There are fires everywhere. And it, there is a general coarsening of our collective spirit that's happening and y'all we can't let that happen we cannot let that happen um and when we come together and hold space for this coarsening through compassion and through dreams that's where it all that's where the magic is for me right so i want to also offer 
that this this space has come as you are. If you need to leave early, awesome, right? If you need to be on camera, off camera, awesome. I'm just glad that you're here. And the last thing I'll mention is that, you know, do what you need to do, right? So like if, if at some point you need to take leave or do something different, do that. And again, this, this practice is donation and that can mean any many different things. So that doesn't necessarily mean financial, right? Like if you have a great experience, you should tell someone, hey, last night I had a great experience. That counts too, right? Or there are different ways to donate and share. My goal is just to hold space for something beautiful in a time of something terrible, right? So that's what we're doing here. Um, so what I'd like to do is um, begin by settling into the breath, right? So Spend the next 20 seconds or so, maybe you shake the shoulders, maybe you work the neck, maybe you shake the hands, but you've probably been over a device all day. So give the body a little bit of animation. And just feel into what's going on in the neck, feel into what's going on in the shoulders. Maybe you stretch the fingers or the wrists or something, but allow this to be a free form somatic experience. Yeah, Deborah, I'll send you. I'll send you a note, and just feel into what the body is telling you. And as you feel into what the body is telling you, feel into the fact there are other people here with you, right? So we're not suffering in silence and alone. We're suffering together, but not even really suffering. We're coming together from the heart space. So another twenty seconds or so, maybe you rub the palms together and create friction in the hands and apply that heat to the body or the face, but just feel into what the body's asking you and where relief can be attained. Another 10 seconds or so. Then coming to some level of stillness in the body, allowing eyes to soften or close, simply getting in touch with the breath. So transitioning from whatever was happening before you got here to right now. Allow yourself to feel grounded. So wherever the body is touching the ground, feel into that, a felt sense of grounded connection. And from that sense of grounded connection, feel the inhale through the nose, exhale out nose or mouth. Just shifting from an external orientation to a more internal orientation. And using the exhale as a tool of spaciousness, right? So the inhale brightens, the exhale lightens. About another 20 seconds or so, simply breathing in and out and feeling supported by the ground, your chair, and one another. Everyone take us inhale through the nose. Exhale out nose or mouth. Gently blink the eyes open. Welcome back. Never gets old, does it? So again, I'm going to repeat the uh, quote that um, Mushi Makeda has on the bottom of her email because that's going to be the focus of our meditation this evening. So if there's a flood, don't let it flood your mind. If there's a fire, don't let it burn your heart. And I won't take liberty of adding to that, but we can use our imagination 
So if there's a wind, don't let it blow you away. I mean, there's so diff- there's so many different ways to embody that statement. Just because something's happening outside doesn't necessarily have to do with us, right? Like we can be aware of it, but it doesn't have to dictate how we move through the world. And in fact, for those of us that hold justice, mercy, and um, loving kindness as elevated things, we can't worry about the world worlding. You know, Lama Rod Owens talks about the world worlding. The world is worlding and it seems to only be worlding even more. (laughs) Um, And we can't control that. But what we can control is how we perceive things, what we let in, what we let out, those sorts of things. And the purpose of our meditation time tonight is going to be not letting the floods that we see, whether it be deluge of information or literal floods. We had a tropical storm here last week again. Um, It's not going to flood our minds. So we're going to focus on clarity of mind. Right. And the most powerful force in the universe is the unleashed compassionate heart. Not the burnt out heart that thinks everything totally sucks. Right. So we're going to focus on compassion. We're going to focus on clarity of mind. And once we focus on those, we're going to hold space for the dreams that we have for ourselves and for this nation. You know, I come from, like I said, I come from a lineage of um, black liberation, people who held space for hope and freedom when it didn't seem possible. So anyone who knows me, if you followed my teaching practice, I'm the I'm a midwife to the impossible. You tell me it can't be done. I'm like, that's cute but I'm beautiful. And so here it is, right? And so that's the type of energy I want us to unleash within ourselves and then just be annoying with other people for that too. Reggie, you're so positive. Yeah, because everything's kind of beautiful, right? Even when it's not, like I'm alive and I can talk and I'm healthy and those sorts of things, right? So that's where we're going. And I'm hopeful that our reset at the top gave you a little bit of grounding to re-enter our meditation phase. But before I do that, I want to open the floor. If anyone has anything to share, like what brought you here? Um, what's on your heart and mind? Um, I'm an organizer, so I always like to open it up to people. Those who regularly meditate with me know that. I don't be talking at people. That's kind of gross. I like to open it up. Um, so if anyone has anything to share, the floor is open for that. And then we'll dive into deeper practice rooted in the lovely wisdom shared by Ajahn Shah. Sylvia. Thank you, Reggie. And I always try to share because you're right, words are powerful. And it's amazing how much harm they can do when they're trapped inside your head. And I am, I meant what I said, I needed some positive Reggie today because I was doing really well. And I'm one of the more positive people that I'm around besides this group in my near proximity and people are always saying you're so positive it's annoying and I'm like yeah but um I broke my wrist a week Mm -hmm. ago Sunday and I did it trying to avoid hurting a child uh and I am taken aback by how something that small and stupid could throw my energy it literally and If you're going to break a limb, let it not be your dominant hand and let it not be your feet. So, I mean, I can still function pretty well. I've gone to work. I flew to Phoenix. I came back and I can handle pain, but I, this, how it has taken my spirit down and I have felt heavy and it's hard to find the shine and you are the one who's got shine spilling over. So what? is the best thing I can do for me right now. Because I go into surgery tomorrow. Okay. And yeah, they have to put a plate in it. Okay. So um, how can I get my bounce back? Being in a community of like-minded individuals where you breathe and find peace is a good start. That's why I'm here. Right. So like props to you for listening to the you that knew you needed to be here as opposed to the you that's like, this totally sucks, I'm a wallow by myself, (laughs) right? So it starts there. And then um, everything's possible. What I mean, when I say everything's possible, what I mean is that like the best possible outcome is possible, the worst possible outcome is possible. So focus on what you consider to be the best. They're both equally true. 
where will you place your attention and intention? And, you know, that also is a good segue to what we're talking about here politically, like a world where everything is awful is totally possible. But it's also possible to imagine a world where we take care of one another, where we hold space um, in loving kindness for all people, where we nourish the well-being of our society as opposed to like live in cynicism and, and, and all those sorts of things. So that's what I would say to you, like you came here, hooray, way to be nourished by community, but also when it seems like when it seems that the worst is possible remember that the best outcome is possible too you see now i know this but when i find myself in a funk it's like even things like the, all the politics got to me more this week than they usually do and yep. just knowing that you know what just keep feeding the good keep dreaming keep dreaming and even though i might seem like the dream is Hey, there as opposed to where it normally is right here you know what these may be the times we need to dream the most i mean it's as if you read my pedagogy <laughs> right so when things seem the worst it's ne it's necessary to dream more it's necessary to hold space for what's possible when everything seems impossible right so sylvia thank you for that blessings on your health and your surgery and i'll definitely be in touch um on as you mend Anyone else care to put anything into the space? Um, anything is welcome. And then we're going to, Deborah, I agree, let's dream of a better world. And it starts with us, for sure. Anyone else care to put anything? Deborah, go ahead. Um, I'm just a um, longtime email recipient, first time attendee. Um, it's the gish gallop that gets me. It's the zone that is our, our zone, my mental zone, my spiritual zone, my heart zone is just flooded with all this, you know, fill in the blank that is coming to, to me from all directions. And um, I just feel so, it's hard, it's hard for me to practice. It's hard for me to do anything without this sitting right here on top of my head and pushing down. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm having a hard time handling all all that's coming in all the time. Um, I, I I confess to doom scrolling a lot, but um, <laughs> confession is the first step. <laughs> but I just, what do we do when when even just sitting, just sitting and breathing, there's still all this, as as, as you say, the flood coming in. Mm -hmm. As Mushim says, the flood just. Yeah, but the other part of that is like we don't let the flood flood our mind. We don't we don't let the fire like burn our heart. Right? E, e go ahead and then we got to meditate y'all like you no know, that's what we're here for. And we do have to meditate. I I just want to this need for clarity on the what is being positive. Because it can't be the denial of the, it's like saying a hurricane is coming and if we prepared, it could all be fine, but it'll all be horrible, but you can't not be preparing for the hurricane and the reality of it. Positivity problem is like you take like a little quote out of context and they're like, oh, be positive. You just have yeah, to look you know at all the good. Good. And I'm... I'm so, I'm not, I'm well, like, I'm inclined to be a nathering nabob of negativism, but you know, that's how I was bred, but, but with cheer, like that's just a state of being. It's not pessimism. It's different. Um, but I was talking to someone who's acknowledged, who's acknowledging that he was currently depressed mm -hmm. and just saying, yeah, so everything looks like it's going to be the end of the world. And at some point it will stop feeling like that because I've been this way before. And I just share that with sometimes, you know, trying too hard to get yourself to be not depressed is just too hard. Just like, let it be. Okay, so right now it just feels overwhelming and think of something you're grateful for and then be done with it. Yeah, and the, the other thing I would add to that is that when things are bad, I cling to the truth of impermanence, right? Like everything changes. 
And, you know, just because we think something that doesn't necessarily mean it's true, number one, but just the current situation we find ourselves in will change. And that it, and we have control, we have influence over how we perceive the change, right? Like if anyone, and I, I've done a lot of teaching lately where people are like, you're so positive. I'm, I'm actually, I'm not, like, I'm really not. I'm just very real and honest. Like, and like, if, if this guy whose native tongue used to be anger and hatred um, is telling you things are going to be all right. You know, the joke I tell folks is like, if a middle-aged black guy is talking to you about peace, ask that brother a story and try his practice because he's come a long way, right? Like 10 years ago, was not positive and not happy about anything. And here I am in these interesting times talking about just give it another shot, right? And so I mentioned that because it's easy to perceive that just because I'm saying this now that I've always been here. That ain't the case at all. Like anyone who knows, like I, if you need a reference, I'll, I'll give you my best friend's phone number. Um, and I mentioned that because if I can go from everything totally sucks, America's racist and I hate it here to I just happen to be here and maybe we can figure some things out. And there's some things that won't change, but there are things that do change. And I'm in control of some of those things that change. And that's kind of where we're going here. It's not like, cause I'm not, I, I taught at Bhakti Fest in Southern California a couple of weeks ago, which is the epitome of love and light. And I taught about grief and social justice. And the way that it was received, I was shocked um, because people were just like, oh my goodness, I've never heard that perspective before. Yeah, it's called a dose of reality rooted in compassionate service, right? You know, I'm, I'm glad they're starting to hear it. Well, they can't hear it if I don't say it. Right. So, E, thank you, Deborah, thank you. And I'm glad that we put this in there because, like, we have to give voice to things that we perceive in order, in order for us to, like, shift. Right. So, what I'd like to do is begin our meditative experience. So, find a posture that allows you to feel supported in the body that can be upright that can be on the back you can place head down but is anything that gives you comfort in your physical body. And as you find this posture. Welcome what is welcome what you're perceiving, whether it be good bad or indifferent try not to judge it just bear witness to it. So if it's something high, try not to get too high. If it's something low, try not to get too low. Just bear witness without judgment as best as possible. And in my darkest days, I used to tell myself, so long as I'm breathing and the sun is rising in the east and setting in the west, there are three things going right. <laughs> So that may be where you're at today. But as you bear witness to what's happening in the mind, what's happening in the body, begin to focus on the first part of the quote. If there's a flood, don't let it flood your mind. So feeling a sense of groundedness in the feet, is there a way to imagine that, set, that felt sense of groundedness traveling from the feet all the way up the body into the mind? So maybe it's focusing your awareness on the feet on the ground. Maybe it's imagining that felt sense migrating up the chain to the mind. So with simple inhales and exhales, how might you resource this sense of groundedness and the awareness of the sense of groundedness? Not just as a felt sense in the feet, but a broader felt sense in the body and the mind.
And if the mind starts to wander, congratulate the mind for doing what it does. And then lovingly place your attention back on this felt sense of groundedness. And then maybe you begin to notice that by focusing on the groundedness, the mind can focus on other things. So another moment or two cultivating this felt sense of groundedness, not just as an external sense, but as an internal sense as well. So not really focusing on positivity or negativity, but groundedness as a resource for whatever life throws at us. Bottom of the next exhale, Switch your focus from a felt sense of groundedness to what's going on in the heart space. And the second part of the quote I ask us to focus on is if there's a fire, don't let it burn your heart. So with every inhale through the nose and exhale out nose or mouth, how might you soften the heart? The exhale is a tool of liberation and softening. So how might that mechanical experience yield a softening of the energy around the heart? So every inhale into the chest brightens the heart, every exhale softens the heart. Focusing on this for another moment or two. Bottom of the next exhale. If possible, expand your awareness to hold the grounded mind and the soft heart. If that's not accessible, focus on what's the most accessible. But from this grounded mind and soft heart, notice what emerges as you consider your dream, your hopes and dreams for yourself, for our society, and begin to transition your focus, not just on yourself, but on the 20 of us that are here. And even if it seems hard for you to focus on something positive, know that you being in community with other people, that's at least one thing positive. So how might we harness the soft, compassionate heart, the grounded, clear mind, the awareness of whatever is happening, and still hope for better? How might we resource ourselves in community to yield something positive for all of us?
a moment or two here. And then as we sit in this space of groundedness in body and mind, openness in the heart, and harnessing the two together in community, just notice what else arises. Because essentially what we're doing here, family, this is spiritual fitness. It's cultivating the resources of a sound mind and an open heart and fortifying ourselves in this refuge as opposed to anything else. This may seem unfamiliar, but with practice, it not only becomes familiar, but for me, it has been life shifting, world, world shaping, world changing. So for the next 10 breaths or so, either focus on the grounded mind, the open heart, the synthesis of the two, or Maybe on the inhale, you breathe in what you hope for, for all of us. On the exhale, you declare it, you send it out. Maybe you even speak it. Or if that's not accessible, maybe you'd be like, God help us on the inhale, right now on the exhale. God is whatever you pray to. But using this fertile experience of collective consciousness and community building to lighten your load. To resource our dreams, but also resource our strength. Because I promise you, whatever they're talking about in Simi Valley is not as cool as what we're doing right now. Four more breaths here. At the bottom of the next exhale, release your focus. If you are focused on mind or body or dreams or whatever, just release all focus and be present with what remains. Notice if anything has shifted. And again, even if it's a small shift, even if you feel less miserable, even if like we stack small victories, we don't eschew them. The bearing witness to what remains after our practice together. Then placing one hand on the heart, one hand on the abdomen. Let's take three breaths in conclusion. In through the nose. Gentle exhale out the mouth. Inhale to resource. Exhale to release. Same drill, inhale to resource. Exhale to release. Release hands from the body, create friction in the palms. And then wherever you care to place heated hands. So we rub our palms together to reset the nervous system. So maybe you massage the face, 
Maybe you massage the hands, but choosing where your tender touch goes. And if eyes have closed, blink them open gently. Welcome back. So dear friends, we got about nine minutes left. Um, put in the chat first, how does that, how did that practice make you feel? Simple practice, but kind of profound. So put in the chat how you feel now or what's going on in your world. And if you care to share, we're here for it. Lily, thanks. Crazy, right? Calmer, more hopeful, somatically relaxing, a lot more softness. Anyone else got anything? Purpose, responsibility, yeah. And again, this don't have to be positive. You could be like, I'm still as shitty as I was 30 minutes ago. I mean, that's totally acceptable. But like, at least you're shitty in community, <laughs> right? A little relaxed, very grounding and brightening. Yeah, Deborah Pia, that's crazy, right? Like, so grounded, like my grounding practice was built during the resistance to Donald Trump. Nothing was certain, right? And so I had to be grounded in my, in my being to go into that uncertainty and do what I needed to do. Right, so that shift for me was like everything's un everything's we like we didn't know how any of that stuff was going to end, but I had to resource myself so profoundly and take that fortification into the cray, and we had a little bit of fun with that. Anyone else care to offer anything into the space? Hey, Keisha, you're welcome. Is your dog doing better? You can you can email me afterwards. Like it's been on my mind. <laughs> well, go ahead, Beth. Hey, I just uh, it's just so much gratitude, and um, you know I don't want to elaborate on um, being in practice with you last Wednesday, but um, his ascension email, but just 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 really just the ripple effect and you know when i proclaimed that i was bringing it back uh, I, i've been hit with it so that's good though but um so like i did a um oh um uh, joe dispensa had a, a walking meditation saturday morning walk for the world and there were um 1500 so people in florida that actually were participants in his program but then all around the world and then um i um when i just I was at a drum circle earlier tonight and doing one tomorrow night and just um <clears throat> just a lot of good stuff and uh, when I said purpose and responsibility it felt like damn straight I'm special you know and um yeah just um and I, I just can't thank you enough Reggie for for your mentorship and your inspiration and and all you're doing and um I mean this sounds kind of silly maybe like a little white woman saying you know it just breaks my heart you know what um just the injustice um um just I don't know, but it, it it's you know just the ripple effect, and you never know you know just just one person, and you know I I mean not that I can change really anybody's political minds, but just when I was when we were doing that, I mean don't mean to elaborate, but when we were doing that, you know I was just praying for like you know understanding, and you know and it's okay because there is dark and and light in the in the universe but we don't have to be so damn bloody about it you know just <laughs> you know we all have you know just just let it be and i actually saw a commercial this morning from i don't know who this woman is um uh, but i mean she was just like you know pure republican and she's like look y'all we can't get this man on the ballot i mean <laughs> it, 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 i mean they're you know and it's like i don't know so it's just but anyway just the ripple effect and hopefully you know just just 
you know, not that I run around saying you, you know, you are healed, but just <laughs> spreading that love and light. And um, no, I appreciate and, that. Just, the one thing I would say to that point is that um, there can be no ripple if we don't stand. You know, if we don't stand for something, there can't be anything. You know, like when when we impeached the president the first time, we had four votes at the beginning. When Rashida Tlaib was like, we're going to go impeach the MF, we had four votes. You want to talk about like a, a downer of a staff meeting the next day? It was kind of it was kind of miserable. But guess what? Like we were like, okay, so we can't get much lower than this. So and we definitely can't break the internet again because that was our first day on both of our jobs. And we just stuck at it and we took it to the people and we were just like, this is untenable. I meant what I said, impeach the MF, because that's what he is, right? And so, like, so similarly, y'all, if we just, I mean, and I'm living proof of this, right? Like, the, the things that I've been gifted to share with the world are because I just hold space for what's possible. Six months ago, it was not possible in most people's minds to have a healing retreat for Black men at Kripalu. We've done it twice. Right. So when I'm telling you that the world is changing, like, it, it, like it, in this experience through, from this brother, it's happening right now, present tense. And so I'm just trying to get more people. Megan and I talked earlier this week, and I've been saying this for a while, like the winds of change are here. We can draft on them and sail out into the ocean and have a kick ass trip. But like if we don't put up a sail, we're going to be stuck at shore. Right. So let's sail. Let's have some fun. It's, it's, it's time for adventure. And if it's going to be topsy turvy anyway, we can at least throw our hands up on the roller coaster and say we, <laughs> like we, right? So, um, anyone else care to offer anything into the space? And thank you all for the chat comments. That's beautiful. I just wanted to say something real quick. I've been working on um, sitting with the discomfort of not knowing and the discomfort of change because. You know, Sylvia, when you're talking about being really optimistic, but feeling down, like that's, I, I'm a very optimistic person. And when I get down, I also get down on myself for being down, right? And so something I've really been working on is just being like, all right, what does it feel like to feel like shit? Let's, let's just see what I can learn from that, right? And, and when I stop trying to fight it or Pollyanna my way out of it, and I just kind of let it sit with me, it's taught me so much. <laughs> I feel like I'm like 300 times smarter now. And it's only been, you know, a couple of weeks of just feeling like crap and being like, all right, I'm feeling like crap. Let's do it. Um, so, okay. you know, I would just say like leaning into some of these bad feelings as much as is healthy for you. Right. And everybody's got to make that discernment on their own but like just being like all right i'll scoot over and make some room on the couch here for your crappy feelings like let's let's hang what do you got to teach me you know so just thank you everybody for for being here and for holding space for all this absolutely megan the one thing i would add to that is like it's not that bad feelings are bad like some of the most instructive times in my life have been through adversity some of the most transformational times i've experienced have been when nothing went right like at all <laughs> right like i didn't start teaching until the pandemic hit and the, and the world shut down right so that adversity is why we're talking today right so bad can have a good outcome assuming that being with me is a good outcome so i don't want to be that presumptuous because that, that, that's <laughs> that's hella forward but um any other thoughts or questions or shares do we feel even a little bit better or less worse I definitely feel better. Thank you, Reggie. And um, I think all this talk about change, um, kind of because I was listening to what everyone was saying, this quote came up in my mind. And it's a quote that I actually wrote down for myself when I was going through a period of um, mobility loss, where I didn't know when I would get my mobility back. And it's this um, quote that basically says, uh, it's by Thich Nhat Hanh. And it says, thanks to impermanence, everything is possible. <laughs> and that was the, I wrote it down for myself. So when it got really bad, I just keep on looking at that. Okay, one day this will probably change. <laughs> and, uh, you know, thankfully I've 
um, my, my health has improved a lot since then, but yeah, that was, that was a quote that, that helped me get through that time. Lily, thank you. So Lily and I are, are co-facilitating this uh, Sounds True MMTCP fundraiser in a month. Uh, Lily, for someone who doesn't, I'm totally putting you on the spot, but it's because I love you. For someone who said they can't teach, way to drop a dime. You're a cheat. <laughs> right, right. So believe in yourself, family. That was amazing. Thank you. And That's you are cool. amazing. Thank you for, for letting me join today. Absolutely. Yeah. Last call for shares, dear ones. Going once, going twice. So all love and gratitude, y'all. I'm hopeful that this has been medicinal and nourishing. The next one of these is November 8th. Uh, tell a friend, like I'm, I'm doing this every, every debate, like, and this is super simple, 45 minutes. We talked about a little bit of everything. We laughed, we cried, we smiled. And guess what? They, whatever they're talking about in California is not as cool as what we just did. It's not. So fortifying that, remembering that there's strength in community, remembering that we control how we interpret situations. And so this gathering, who cares what's happening in Simi Valley? Because we're on we're on the cusp of something beautiful. So blessings to all, love to all. Tell if you had a great experience, tell somebody else. If you had a terrible experience, tell me, and I'll work to fix it. Love, Grace, Thank and you, Reggie. Until Thanks, everyone. Time. Good to see you Thank all. You, Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Reggie. Bye. 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 Take care, everyone. Bye. Namaste. Bye. 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 Good night. Blessings. You as well. <laughs>